No, no. No. Are you from? Yeah. Está riendo. Claro que sí habla español, güey. <risa> I look at that. Uh, are you okay? <laughs> Oh, Jack Johnson! Jack Sparrow! Jack Sparrow! Jack Sparrow! He's gonna choke on the pool. Oh! Hello? Um, Konnichiwa! Whoa! Big sauce! Oh, big sauce! Oji, are you a cowboy? Hey man! How are you? Makes sense. Good idea or bad idea? Good. G.I. Yeah. Jane, is that you? <laughs> Straight up. Dry. Hola, Norteñito. Bonjour. Bonjour. No, mi compa. You don't speak Spanish? No, no. No. Are you from? Claro que sí habla español, güey. Yo, I f with your head. Thanks, man. I f with your ceiling. Thank you. My ceiling is pretty lit. It's a very nice hut, sir. Thanks. And that's a you know nice look, man. I like your hat. Thanks, I like your eyebrows. <laughs> Thanks. I like your mustache. I wish I had one like that. I love the hat, man. That's Hey, hey, where you from? You from Texas? Florida. How about you? I'm from Florida too. That's Jackie Chan. Are you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. 
Yeah, I come from the alligator and sh**. Mmm, I see. What the f**k? Like Holy like shit, is that? You're majestic. Yo, you do karate, that's for sure. I've seen you from Karate Kid. <laughs> that's going to be- Hmm. <clears throat> Yo, what do you think about this guy right here? What are those things that are on his face? It's called a beard. <laughs> so I, have, I don't even know, bro. Are you sure? Maybe they're fake. You just shaved this part right here. Mm. Are you streaming? <laughs> no. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? What, 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 would, what would make you think that I'm streaming? You got a nice camera, bro. <laughs> Thanks. Out of curiosity, uh, what, are you, what are you using for your webcam? I'm using... Wait, is it good? Wait, what the f***? No. It's it's kind of fuzzy. To be it's honest. letting me down right now. Wait, yo. Yeah, dude. Yo. It, the focus is not in, man. Wait, wait. <laughs> yo, you don't got that focus set on, right? Yeah, it's better. Right? Oh, there we, yeah, there, there, go. there we go. There we go. Wait, so what is it? It's a. <laughs> uh, a smart cam at six hundred. <laughs> 4K lens. Emi. Okay. I don't even know what that is. But yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up. I'm using a. Uh... You're probably using a camera. <laughs> Actually, fu funny enough, I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm using a Razer. What was it? A uh, Kio Pro. You said it, Razer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Razer, Razer is this. Oh my God! This I just bought this candle. God damn. Rose and cedar sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, bro, you have a good day. Hey, man, you too. Hmm. Play and tell a song. Hmm. What's up? How's it going? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't see that you were holding food and I thought I was gonna be serenaded for a minute. Oh. Like, I thought you were gonna have a guitar and sing a song. Now I'm kinda disappointed. Hi! What are you eating? I'm a Filipino. Are you Filipino? Oh. This is so funny. Hey. <laughs> Wait. Steve Aoki. Steve Aoki. <laughs> Steve Aoki. Arr, mate. Arr. Are you a mix of Jack Sparrow mixed with the, uh, that guy from The Walking Dead? Lee? No. Steve guy's name.
I like your hat. What are you drinking? Hot chocolate? Swamp water. You want some? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, her, her too, her too. <laughs> Drink the swamp water. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is that, uh, is that, um, is that, is that, um, um, um my daddy? That, is this a Justin Timberlake? Yes, it is. Oh my god. The horses in the bed. <laughs> Oh, where you look like, uh, what's his name? He looks like a pickle. Look at like Johnny Depp. What are you eating? Some dogs. Can, can I have a piece? <laughs> oh, that's really good. That was cute. You country? Hello? You country? Are you country? I don't know. I don't think you're actual country. You love America? Yep. Yeah. Welcome to July's my favorite holiday. Facebook and Mara. Facebook. Super Find an Asian country. I've never seen someone take so much offense to playing a game. Bro got so mad because I was playing Kingdom Hearts, though. It's not that serious. I'd understand if it was something else, but like, damn. Oh god, there's a cowboy on here. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Nice. What's up? What you eating? Can of tuna. And oysters. And fish. <clears throat> the the tuna's mint, but the rest is okay. Dude, you look like you're ready to play CSGO, man. Yeah, I play a lot of CSGO, but I also scream the N-word. How much, how much average on a day do you hear the N-word? If I'm playing CSGO? Mm -hmm. Maybe like... Maybe like every sixth game. I hear the N-word all the time, because most of the time I'm the one who's screaming it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fun. I also call people undeveloped childs and tell them that they're the smartest kids with Down syndrome. Yeah. Does that make for good content? Yeah, of course it does. <laughs> but also. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> hey, what's your uh, what's your what's your handle or what's your channel? What's my channel? Lone yeah. Johnson. Lone Johnson. Can you type in the uh, the chat? Yeah. I, I make some pretty banger content, but I also said the uh, the N word on Fortnite. So yeah, uh, I scream the N word on my videos a lot. So I mean, uh, hey, it's a free country, right? Yeah, it's a free country. And I also uh, on my Outlast playthrough, I was trying to act like a child YouTuber. You, I mean, whenever you can, you can literally tell that I'm trying to like I I, I said what the f and then I was like. Guys, remember, always don't be a bad kid, don't curse, and believe in the Lord. Okay, do you believe in a rel rel uh, religion? Do I believe in a religion? Yeah. I believe in God, but I don't trust the church. That, that, that's pretty fire. I like seeing original stuff. You're like the first person I've come across on a medal so far with at least some kind of unique element to you there. So, props to you, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> Flash man. Hey, I like your costume. What are you doing, bro? Bro, why did I do that? Hey, I like your I feel like I'm racist. Hey, hold on. I like your costume. Thanks, man. Hey, I, I got a question. Yeah. So, like, uh, you there with the uh, the cross earring. Mm -hmm. Um, like, where where did that where did that hair come from? Like, recently, I've seen a lot of kids like wearing that hair. I was just curious. Like, is there a celebrity or something that? Like made it made it's it genetic. hot or what's this is up? Natural. This is genetics. Like you didn't do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. So like you just woke up one day and it was just like that. No, I, I was born and then my hair grew and it was like that. So like if you don't cut it, it just does that. Well, yeah, yeah, he cuts it, but like yeah, if I was to shave it all off, it would grow back and it would be like this again. But like and the when it's shorter, it'll start like looking like this. Mm -hmm. But like, does it just? Does it just keep going Ooh. along the x-axis? <laughs> it just keeps, or, oh, like, nah, or does it eventually, like, does it eventually, like, start going down? Yeah, yeah, Like, at what point? Like, when it's, like, oh, where? This where, where? Tell, me, tell, me, tell me when to stop. Mm -hmm. This is it, like up, and then these, the, the edges, go down, so it's just a fro. So it's not perfectly, like, spherical? No. Oh. Uh, I see. So, me. wait, who are you cosplaying as? Cosplaying. You know Ami Ve, Ami Ve, you know Ami Ve, you know Ami Ve, search him YouTube, Ami Ve Banta hai. Anyway, but I can't say company coming a boot buddy. Johnny Depp boot. That's what he looks like. Sorry.
Nice hat. Thanks, man. Nice setup. Thanks. I'm still undecided about the whole, like, making the background a little bit fuzzier than myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just don't have a blank background. Uh, if I did, I wouldn't have it fuzzy. But, like, well, I, mean, I have a bed back there. I just got all this set up tonight, and I'm testing out my mic. That's not bad, though. I mean, you have the... You still have a reasonable amount of guidelines from the curtain, like the curtain thing, yeah, the line, I mean, like the you, corner you can, of the wall. Yeah. I mean, you could see stuff. I just like it blurry. I've had it blurry for a while. But Yeah. I, I try not to show my, like, down. what's, oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, like, that, like as long as, as long as we don't know that it's, like, a bed, oh, like, if that. we just think it's some kind of, like, table or something. Oh, I mean, I don't care if it's a bed. It, there's a bunch of shit on it, because I just got done doing all this, so it'll be cleaned up tomorrow, but... I think the one blur is better than two. That's better. You should do the thing know. where you're like, which one's better? One or two? Or <laughs> one or five? Or two. <laughs> Maxed out. I think you want to make it at least so that it doesn't look like you're kind of like, when you lean on your desk, you don't want to look like you're like floating. You know what I'm saying? Like you still want enough that it's like, okay, cool. I mean, because otherwise it takes. The table will be too too fuzzy. Hey, what kind of what kind of content you create? Nothing. Nothing. I'm just the guy that likes technology and computers. You just you just you just have a pre, you just have like the ambient lighting. You got the boom arm with the mic, oh, and yeah. you probably have a. Do you have a pop filter on that? No. No. I had one on. I took it off. You didn't like it? Uh, I forgot where I put it. To be honest. Do I you think it helped? I don't know if I noticed a difference playing it back, like, on, like, feedback. Um, it might a little Did bit. Did you ever, like, test it? Did you, like, go up real close and go, puh, puh? Yeah, I mean, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, but the closer I get to this, the more, the more sensitive it's going to be. Because yeah, that's just the kind of mic it is, but. Are I, you, uh, are you in America? Yes. Where at Texas? Illinois. Illinois. Oh, okay. You're like you're like up there with uh, Al Bundy and everything. Al Bundy. And like I think, yeah, like you're up there with the Breakfast Club. Oh yeah, and, I mean uh, that's Chicago. Yeah. Kevin McAllister. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. A lot of famous people in the Chicago area. Hey, well, have a good one, man. You too. You too. Thanks. Cool, bro. You can get it. Cool. What's your name? Wait, you look cool. No, you don't. I love your hat. Thanks. It's awesome. Oh. You're awesome. Oh, thanks. Oh. Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? I love your hat. I'm good though. Mm. Merci beaucoup. Yes, yes. What are you doing? My hat. Thanks. Nice uh, sleeve. Thanks. Dude, I love your hair, bro. Thanks, man. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Johnny B. John <laughs> How are you? Ugly. Hello. Are you taking drugs? What is What is that? I 
Let me come up and eat. Oh, oh, what's up, mother? What you eating? Cheese. That's like sperm. Smash. Hey, hi. How's it going? Nice cap. Who is going to go to the house? Hello, Hello baby. Come to India. How's it going? How oh, baby? Well, where are you from, bro? Where are you from? Florida, USA. Band the car, both are you getting out the color of everyone is high, bro. It's gone. Hello, Messi Jan. How are you? How's it going, man? Yeah. Are you from China? No. Mongolia. Are you from? Are you from China? No. I guess are that's from, good. Are you from Mongolia? No. Korea. Are you? I'm not even sleeping. My hands not. Oh. What? <laughs> Hello, bro. How's it going, man? What are you doing, bro? Eating cheese. Yeah. From where you are? Florida, USA. Oh, nice. How about you? What? Where are you from? I'm from India. Oh, that's fun. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, bye. That's why he's good. Hello. Oh my god. Oh, you're so far. Definitely pull the cowboy hat off right now. Pull it off right now. Pull it off. Take it off. Take it off, daddy. Hey, shut up. You're, a loser. you're not a loser. I'm sorry. That was really mean. Why are you being so mean? I'm not being mean to you. I was talking about the people before you, but I already started doing it when I saw it, like when you came on screen, so I couldn't like stop. So what happened right before you did that? <laughs> no, I don't know. It was just some weirdo. This dude, he skipped me, but before I skipped him because he was just like, hi, and I, I was like, hi, and he was like, how old are you? I was like, okay, oh bye. And then I left, and then I saw him again, and he had a friend, and so I was like, oh, you have a friend with me now? And he's like, you skipped me, you b And then he skipped me, and so I was like, loser. I mean, I don't know, maybe he just wants to make sure he doesn't go to jail, right? I mean, it's, he definitely was not trying to go to jail because he was like skinny and short. He looked like he was pu 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 pubescent or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> yeah, pu pubescent. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you do you trim your facial up yourself or do you like get it cut out like a barber's or something? Nah, I just take care of my own stuff, really. Gotcha, gotcha. 
See, I want to, but I struggle with like lining my neck up. I, I always make it really uneven, so. Hmm. Yeah, it's not something I, I'm good at yet. <clears throat> what do you Practice want? safe sex, it says on your shirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that. Is that like a campaign or? No, this is just some merch, man. I find uh, I find it funny, so. Like, like it's your like it's your merch. No, 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 it's not mine. <laughs> I have a very special message for you. Okay, what's uh, what's that message? I must warn you. Okay. If you go out there, there are temptresses. Okay. On the prowl. And they seek to ensnare your pee pee mm. and enslave you. You must resist them. See, you must protect. I actually the pee -pee. see. See, I, I I completely understand your message. You know what I mean, and I think that's a great message. But um, last year, actually, I I met up with some very professional doctors, and I had a surgery down there. And they, they took out, you know, that special that special gland that those monsters want to get from your pee-pee. So now they don't come after me. Mainly because I don't produce kids. <laughs> well, I mean, do you just... I mean, but, but you tell them that? Well, they, they just know. They can smell it on me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how their, you know, senses really? work. Really? I guess so. They have some sense about it? I don't know. That's what I would assume. Man. Mm -hmm. That's weird. I mean, on the plus side, I mean, I guess on the plus side, you're not going to pay child support, right? Ever. And it, and and if, if, you know, I get into something serious and I end up having a kid, I'll know it's not my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. Yeah, what's up? Do you think that, like, AI companions will start to out-compete real friends or real human companions? Ooh, see, I want to say no, but at the same time, Snapchat just added this, uh, like, my AI bot or whatever I have. And I can't lie, I'll be messing with that here and there. I don't think it'll take over like my real friendships, but I think at a point when our generations are growing up and that's what they're given as children, it's a possibility. Because right now when we're already built our friends and then you bring in this stuff, we're gonna be like, yeah, this is cool, but like, I already built this connection. But if they start that before connections are built, it, it's really easy to turn people into I guess a really independent, like antisocial, whatever. But what about the point at which we have, um, like, bodyguard robots and romantic or sexual companion robots? You see what I'm saying? Oh. Like I mean, at that point, there's, there's got to be something to keep our species going on. Once our species gets like half what it is, do you understand the world crisis that they're gonna make it about and? how much they're gonna push to have children. There, there would be a big shift and stuff. Oh, definitely. I mean, well, cause right now it's more so that isn't, see, I can't even tell because some people say we need to produce more people. And then other people say we're already producing like on like a runaway train. Do you think that, which one do you think we are? Do you think we're- I mean, uh, this is all I have to say. Our numbers of how many humans we have on the planet is constantly increasing. When is that going to get to the point where we don't have enough space or we don't have enough resources to provide for everybody? Is that going to be you, like? Is that is that going to get to like a genocidal? State do you think we're running or, out though? Like, do you think we're anywhere close to that? I honestly, I have no idea. I don't. On a, this is going to sound, f but I don't really pay attention to global issues like that. I mean, I just have I other think stuff that, going on, I guess, but. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think in terms of like the available land and all that, there's a uh, there's quite a vast. Exp I mean, if you ever look yeah, up like how much of the land that we actually even take up, and then if you you that's not even mentioning how deep the oceans are. I mean, we could have entire cities in the oceans. I mean, we I don't mean, even... if we learn how to 
do whatever. I mean, the thing that the thing that really confuses me is in the past 30 years how fast our technological like advances happened and how we're at like a point where we just kind of we're, we're stuck. It doesn't feel like we're advancing anymore. Like it's crazy we went from like black and white photos and television and like cameras where you need powder and like all of this and into something ridiculous and it's just I can literally look up anything in the world that I want in the palm of my hand. So I don't so I don't think that technology and it, I don't think technology is at like a standstill as much as I think that I think we have reached a point though where we're facing some very strong ethical and moral dilemmas mm. because of the effect that it's having on a wide scale. Like okay. It's quite frightening that as a society and a species, we're not having a conscious conversation about how technology is obscuring mm -hmm. our humanity. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure at what point that happened. Maybe it was when, um, I don't know if it was like Gen Xers or millennials that, that had kids and then started handing their kids tablets as the babysitter mm. i don't know if maybe that was it i feel like that probably wasn't a good idea but that's kind of like today's version of like tv like tv blockbuster babies right like growing up yep. in front of the tv except i would argue that the stuff that one would have grown up like like if you if you were a part of any of like 80s 90s culture at all mm -hmm. I, oh yeah, I was. I was. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah. There was like a little bit of, I guess, propaganda or political messaging inside, like you know, movies and shows and stuff. But like, I don't think it was on the level that it is now. Mm -hmm. oh, where, because like, easily. the primary function of movies and shows back then was primarily entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like, like, and you could tell that even if they slipped in, like a little, you know, a little value, because you can't avoid it, right? Like, if you're creating something, of course, something's something, some value, or because, like, you know, I mean, if you don't stand, if, if you stand for nothing, you know, you don't, there has to be like something, right? Like, and whether it could even be unintentional, right? But you got to always mm -hmm. end up having some kind of message somewhere, whatever, because if you tell any story, there's going to be a point where there are moral and ethical questions and political questions. Hmm. I don't know what society's trying to do nowadays, man. Honestly, I just make money and stay to myself. I don't, I don't get into all that normally. That's, that, I mean, that's pretty much like what we thought, like back in kind of like the '80s prediction of mm -hmm. like the techno noir future. Like, it's like well, yeah, yeah. what, what would it be it? like? Mm -hmm. It's like now we're here. It's sort of like oh, like, and I, kind of, I kind of stay locked in too. Like, I just kind of feel like every time you like go out there and you like interact with people and then oftentimes it's like you know generally it's great but I feel it's almost like every sixth person is like a psycho you know what i'm saying like every no, like sixth person is a huge liability for some reason i don't know i uh, i work with a very small team in like a research facility so i'm only talking to like four co-workers that i don't even work with really i work by myself but it's like i really keep my stuff very small. So this is like an umbrella corporation kind of situation? I mean, no, yes, no. <laughs> it's, it's like a bio, so I'm in a biomedical facility. So everything that's going on here is for like understanding of like diseases, I guess. Right, right now it's like how to cure a lot of diseases. Hmm. Recently, where, where I'm at, some people just discovered, what was it? It was like a T TBC or something like that. It was something they haven't cured in a long time, and those motherfuckers cured it. Those motherfuckers smart. Oh, what was it, like tuberculosis or something? It, it, it was something. I, I don't know. It could have been TB. But huh. It was something they cured recently. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool what I do, but I'm not one of the smart people doing a lot of the research. I'm more of like, I take care of the animals. Oh, okay. like that's my job. That's what I get paid for. So, uh, do you think that's what you're going to do long term? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a weird phase right now. Um, I went to here because I wanted to work with animals, really. And, I mean, it's, it's a facility. It's, it's not, it's research. You know, I have to see some fucked up things here and there. And that sucks, but 
Overall. Like experimentation kind of stuff. I mean, hold on. I, I have like videos of like a bunch of mice with like head implants and like windows where you can like see their brain, I guess. Like so you can see Jeez. it like functioning while they're like running tests or whatever to understand what's going on. Um, I'll show you. <coughs> Bless you. Thanks. <laughs> How long have you been making content? Um, I feel like that depends on a few things. I was making a lot of content before I was like sharing it. I got it. So it's like a window what? to when whatever they're doing, you know what I mean? They can scan it. They have like this camera above where they're doing all these tests and it like, it's, it's crazy to see. I, I want to see if I have one. I, I swear I had one. You're a biohazard chinchillas. I have to be in like a full outfit right now to be in the room with them. Why are they like radioactive or something? You know, they're, they're biohazard. If they bite you, do you turn into like chinchilla man? I haven't gotten bitten, I can't tell you yet. Here are ones that have head implants. And they Oh man. They have so much different stuff. They That's they literally like, at the at the like dairy farm up there, they have a cow that literally has a hole in its side practically where you can like reach through it. And that's so you can see like all of the food digesting and like it's crazy. Some like Umbrella Corporation stuff. <laughs> Wait, is this where you work? Yeah, this is where I work. This is Dang. And, is right. that uh, is, is that top secret at all? Is that confidential? The stuff I'm showing, of course not. I did have to sign an, an NDA though. Oh, okay. About like 90% okay. of my work, but that's okay. Because I know the morals of it. I understand. You know what I mean? I wouldn't go mm. through here and, you know, if it was something fucked up, I'm not going to put myself Is that... It. Is that stuff that I'd be able to find on like YouTube, like footage like that? Uh, footage, probably not. I like so. I'm I'm at a university, and this is like a Ivy League university. So they had to like all the stuff they do here. They, you know what I mean? They they had to get it passed by something. They can't just let it slide like that. But okay. At the same time, I still had to sign an NDA, and I can't say most of the stuff I do there. Okay, uh, should I make sure that what you showed me is like not in any video that I put on YouTube? Oh, no, I don't care about that. It's n None of the stuff we're doing is like harming animals or anything, so I'm not like... Um, oh yeah, no, I'm also just wary. I'm also I, just I know wary. everything I show and everything I have on my phone I can show. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to take a picture of something I can't share and then be like, well, I can't show you this, but... <laughs> no, that's yeah. I, I'm very, I'm very safe with my work. Man, so we're we're like merging between the biological and the technological, and we're turning into cyborgs. I mean, kind of. The amount of stuff we have, like technology for, you know how um, they do uh, cancer treatment, right? Like chemotherapy. There's breeding facilities that breed mice and then give them, you know, chemotherapy to kill most of their cells and then inject them with human cells. So they're like, you know, 70, 80% human in a sense. So when you do, you know, your research on them, it's more of looking for like a research human perspective rather than this mouse. Does that make sense? Like, if we're looking for a cure for something, right, the cure for dogs is going to be different than the cure for humans, right? So if we could implement that to where it's mostly a human, we can see how it would affect the human perspective. So they were, like, replacing the cells of a mouse with human which, cells? Which is kind of crazy, and that, that's not even where we're at. That's, like, a breeding facility. So, like, that's where, if we wanted the research, we would buy the mice from. So they're specifically breeding mice in, and, and manipulating them in a fashion to try to make them as, I guess, DNA close, like close so, DNA so, wise, so like for to research humans. and like these health purposes, we can try and find cures for us. And all that. I, I guess that makes sense. Like that it's would just, be. It's, it's just it's just crazy to me. Like how how can somebody like think of that? I guess or just have the capacity to understand how to do this.
that's the stuff that blows my mind. Like, I, I, I don't think in any world I'd be able to be like, you know, I'm gonna f***ing turn a, a mouse mo mostly human. And then, mm. and then continue that throughout generations and change colorings and whatever. And... Well, so when you think about how much, or how much money and how powerful certain people are in this world, don't you think that the probability that Jurassic Park actually exists is like 99.9%? Like, think about it. You mean to tell me that we do crazy stuff like you just talked about with me? And, like, Bro, you don't think I that there's some care. mad I powerful person? I take care of a fucking living dinosaur. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I think of it. Do you know what a toadfish is? No. Bro, it's a living dinosaur. <laughs> I, there's no way that... Is it, a, is, it a, is it a hybrid of a sort? Is it a man-made hybrid? Or does it occur naturally? Those things swimming around that it's eating are full-size goldfish that it just sucks up like a vacuum, practically. What? Those those are goldfish that it's eating. It's and like these how ones, big are those? Probably like a little bit bigger than a football. Jeez. Stuff like that, like that's no joke. It, when you see, it's it's a living dinosaur. Like you just look at it and you're just like, there's no way that like this creature should be existing right now. It's, well, I mean, it's wild to see. We, well, even when you look at, I mean, even when you look at, like, crocodiles and alligators, it's like, dinosaurs. like, that's a dinosaur. Yeah, but no, I'm that's, saying, that's a like, legit dinosaur. Like, I think, like, full... I, think I, I, some, I know what you're trying to... Yeah, like, I think some rich person, like, full-blown has got, like, T-Rexes running around on an island somewhere. I mean... I... There's a lot of things that, uh... Like, how could it not be? There's a lot right? of like, things. Right? Like, think about it. It only takes it only takes one of those super, super powerful rich people to be like, I want that. I mean, and super, then they have it. But which rich person, super powerful rich person, is going to be like, let's bring back a f dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, would it, would it be the craziest thing that they've done in humanity? Hey, of course not. I'm not, I'm not arguing there. I just want to know who's crazy enough to be like, yeah, let's get some scientist to build me a dinosaur. Think about it. Like, like, like if you and your, if you and a whole bunch, think about it. like if among a set of people, if you make, if you make them all like mad powerful and stuff, like there's one of them in the group that is like, wait. I could do, and think about it. When they're in that position, like most normal stuff doesn't really satisfy them. You know, well, what yeah, I'm saying? that's like, why they're doing these things. That are it's because like boredom. Yeah. They're like they're, they're like oh like because because a lot there's a, there's like the everyday peasant kind of stuff, which is like oh well I want to like make money, I want to like date someone, I want to get married, I get and, like, and, have and kids. And then there's like once once you reach a level of um, status, yeah, it's not about what I need anymore. It's more about what I can show others I can do. You're which right. Is, which and is a weird I, I never I never got into that. Like when when I started making some money money. I never had a switch that's like now now I need to show other people what I can do. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm a selfish ass person. <laughs> I have no I mean need I don't think it's about others and like do all that. That's not I'm not sure it's about showing others as much as I think for them there's nothing really left to stimulate them other than doing things that they can kind of like imagine or conceive of, even if it's like hmm. arguably unethical. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get you, I get you. It's kind of like when someone plays The Sims mm -hmm. and they're like, they get bored of the regular game and they're like, oh, like I'm gonna like start messing around with stuff and see like what happens, yep, right? Yep, yep. Hmm. Those are dangerous people. I know, I know quite a few dangerous people. <laughs> How do you feel about Area 51? I mean, you know it. That's something I've always I, been really, really interested in. It just, I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't really make me feel any certain way in the sense of like, oh, well, you know, it, it, there's always going to be an Area 51, naturally. Of course, of course. I mean, 
we just, I mean, I just accept that what's in front of us is exactly what was put intentionally in front of us. So 100%. it's kind of like the Westworld situation mm -hmm. where like, fine, like I accept that we are only given the illusion that we are in the most technologically advanced like level mm -hmm. and, and, and utilizing the most advanced technology. Whereas like, there are probably cities and societies, secret, like like unknown to us, of whether course. they be inside the ocean or far off in isolated yeah. mountains yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever, or even through a black hole um, into another kind of like area, that they are kind of like more advanced in every way. And I accept that Aliens because, kind of thing. you know. 100%. See, see, the thing is, that made me really realize, I guess, like, I, I always believed in aliens, but it's more of, like, I don't know if I consider them aliens, more like extraterrestrial beings, like other other forms of life, I guess, is what I kind of want to word it. It's, do you know when we had the most UFO sightings? It was right, it was right after we dropped the nuclear bomb. Really? Right after the nuclear bomb, we saw the most sightings ever reported by people. And that kind of blows my mind the second that we did something, you know, life-threatening to that, like, could actually wipe us out. They all came in and kind of checked, like, what's going on. Like, they've now, been was, surveillancing which, us, which is kind of Which specific one was this? Was this the, like, Hiroshima, Nagasaki? Mm -hmm. I mean, so then maybe... Which is kind of crazy to me. Maybe they've got, like, more aliens and stuff, like, over there. It's either that, or or I could think of is we did something that could potentially wipe us, and they came to see what was going on. Like they've been surveillancing us for however long, and we did something. They're like, oh, shit, like what is actually happening now? Do you think that? Do you think that they try to actively restrict or limit our ability to exit this world or this planet? Hmm. Because think about it, like, like if we were an alien, if you were alien species and you were looking at humanity, would you? Would I want to escape? No, would you, would you want to restrict their ability to escape? Oh, see, see, this is the thing. I don't think it's restricting the ability. I think it's, it's a technological thing. Once we're able to like, be able to just send people, because we, we can't just send people to different places right now. We, you know, how, how long does it take for like a rocket to get built or how long it takes like how, how expensive it is to launch a rocket how you know you, you, it's pretty expensive yeah yeah it's just I, I feel like it, it gets to a point where once we're able to do it is when they're gonna restrict us should I I mean you can't really you can't really tell the morals of other creatures you know I can't tell you what what my dog is thinking but being with I mean, her for so long, I can kind of see the morals, right? Like, once you're understanding and observing this creature for so long, you can understand mostly what they're, what they're about and what they're going to do. Well, I think, I think if, if, if aliens were to look at us, I mean, they... I feel like they have been for so long. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would imagine that they would, that they would have intentions of kind of keeping us at least in a controlled fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that we we don't just on mass like kind of like spread. I mean, kind of because kind of how we are. We think we're the best, you know. Like we're well, because we look this at planet. We like, I mean, look at how we are. I mean, like we're not we're advanced. We're super smart. We have the capacity to constantly evolve and grow. But like, but if you were an alien and you studied human history, would you get the idea that humans are necessarily uh, I don't know friendly towards alien species? Exactly. Nope. Right? Like, like it's. <laughs> are you kidding me? Last time we found. Like we failed the test. Literally, we, literally the we saw people that were different colored than us and called them aliens and tried to f capture them and enslave them. So it's like. Humans can't even handle the simple idea. Like, 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 like see what. You, you hit the nail on the head. Like, humans haven't even been able to accept the simple idea that we look. That they have different ethnicities. Yeah, yeah. Literally, that, if we that can... growing up in different parts of the world makes us look different, and that's just. It's like too ooh. big of a concept to understand <laughs> that we're all, you know, we're, we're different things completely. We can't even get something like that. 
how are we supposed to handle anything close to the Star the Star Trek Galactic Federation? Anything, exactly. There's no way. Like, and that's like why we I wouldn't. Area 51. Like, I, I feel like we have been in contact. I feel like the government does talk to aliens consistently. It's just how many people could really. I don't know if the word handle is what I'm looking for, but how many people can really like take the idea of like communicating with aliens? I think it would be. I think it would be very consuming for the average mind because I think it would be very consuming in terms of like because I think that I think as the show. people that <laughs> yeah I mean the people that rule the world I think they want us to focus on being productive okay like I don't think they want us to suddenly just have some mental crisis over extraterrestrials because suddenly that would because you can imagine on a worldwide scale that would probably hinder production. That would probably hinder our like productivity. I mean, yeah, something that that's that's extremely life changing. I guess life changing. Nothing would actually change. I guess, but it's just them admitting. I guess and really having the proof that like these yeah. exist. Yeah, it would it would change a lot, man. Yeah, like that would be that would be quite too much. Because then everybody so, I mean, everybody would get paranoid that we're gonna we're gonna be invaded now. Everyone would you know there's so many new fears would come out, so many different things, so much. Yeah, it would just. Do you think do you think difference. racial relations has even progressed from the time of the '80s and the '90s to now? Hmm. See, see, that's a tough question. I want to say yes, but I don't know. See, I, it's kind of hard for me to say. So I, I'm fully white, right? I, I'm the only fully white one in my family. I, I grew up in a you know a mixed household around. I, I grew up all around all of it, so it, it was a normal environment for me, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Like growing up, my sister's black, so it's like I never I never thought of that different. You know, I never thought of other people, I guess, of looking different affecting me. Like. Like, it's not like you see someone who's, quote, different from yourself, and then suddenly it, like, breaks your brain. It's, and you're, you're, you're like, know. oh my I goodness, just, how can that exist? <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Growing up and then on top of that, being able to, to understand, I guess, racism at a young age and seeing it growing up, even though I'm white, I guess, kind of kind of opened my eyes more. Do you know what I mean? Because I mean, I'm like, all I this hatred think... isn't against me, it's against everyone that doesn't look like me, which is wild. Well, I don't think... I don't think being I don't think being white makes it so that you can't see racism. Like I think that you just ex like I think you can experience mm -hmm. it even firsthand. I, I know I can, in a different I, I way. I can agree, but I've had a lot of you know friends talking with white friends that grew up in households. They didn't even really understand or know racism was a thing until they were like high school, because they didn't. I don't know they. They, they had no way to see it, I guess. Do you know what I mean? They, they grew up in this white neighborhood, all these white people around them. They're not going to see the racism. Do you know what I mean? But being with people, I guess, that a lot of people hated on at the time. So you mean like kind of witnessing firsthand? Yeah, like yeah. In like in front of, oh, not yeah, movies yeah. and stuff, but like actually, witnessing firsthand. Yeah, yeah, like seeing the side eyes, seeing the stares, seeing, you know, like moving your purse to your other arm and like all, all the little noticing things. And it's just... It, it was, it was f***ing wild to me. And then even if, even if it's not, even if it's not that, I feel like even if everyone ends up being the same race within a community, a town, or a city, you still end up getting the socioeconomic discrimination. Like, you're always going to get some... But that's not like, racial. People. That's the thing that has nothing to do with... Right. Uh, like... Looking at the grand scheme of things, normally it's affiliated with racial, but that's not because of their race. It's because of where they're put. Right. You know I mean? But I'm You're saying, like, even even in like, if you look at like Japan, for instance, mm -hmm. I mean, like, they're all Japanese or mostly Japanese, mm -hmm. but they still find every reason to judge each other. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. I get you. I get you. Like to us. As Americans, I guess, by and large, I would say that we have a much more diversified look to us mm -hmm. as people. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, and not to sound racist myself, but like, I mean, honestly, like when when I look at say like Japan, it's like, all right, well, I guess if y'all like 
do like different colored hairs with like dyes and stuff yeah, yeah, but yeah. like if no one uses any of that kind of like if you go to a school that's like super like restrictive well I'll, I'll, i'm pretty sure every school there you know same clothing same everything they yeah, like same they, haircut they look, they look right same clothing uniform i understand what you mean yeah yeah it's very it's like <laughs> <laughs> the thing and about, yet, even it, then, the thing about stereotypes is that stereotypes come off. You know, it's it's based off some truth in there, which. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it. It's based on like an either an observed truth or something that is at least like proliferated as an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, I don't think it necessarily needs to be true. I think it just needs to come from a place where, at some point, I I think it traces. It always traces back like to something like there was yeah, yeah. something yeah, that's what i mean there, there's a reason it's a stereotype and not like do you know what i mean i don't know i just people get really sensitive over certain things i don't mean to offend people when i say things you know i don't i'm not saying this to hurt people it's just how, how things come out i guess it's how i work well, i think we i think we live in an age where the average person tends to get offended like pretty easily when it comes to like these sort of things. The thing I find really hypo hypocritical, though, is like, how can these kids be so quickly offended at that stuff, but these same kids have really poor conversational manners? Like, like isn't that kind of really strange? It's like, so so the same kids that like just get super uptight, like anytime you even come close to any certain subject that is like considered not politically correct, they like lose their minds. People, Yet, they don't even know how to, like, politely converse people, with a person without being insulting or, like, like, or, like, talking some, some you know what I mean? Like, it's weird. I'm like, y'all don't even, y'all don't even know how to carry a polite conversation, but you're going to get angry at other people for offending you? People want the world. They, they, they want their own perfect world, and everyone's going to do everything they can to build that around them. It's cool, honestly. If people are like that, it's just like, for me, I'm like, cool, you be you. That's not going to affect my life. Mm. Like I said, I'm a selfish-ass person. I, I take care of the ones I, I rock with, and that's that. I'm not... I, well, I think it's like self in, I think it's like self-invested. I, I think just, that... I really don't, yeah. People say what they want about me. That don't affect me. I don't care. Like this, this was a really good one. We shared a lot of good ideas. I like that. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Mystic. Missed it? Cool. I'm Jack. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. You have a good hey, day, man. Have... We'll, we'll see each other someday. Yeah, man. Have a good one. Take care.